Ohio horn has sounded. And today's game is complete. Time now for Cougar Post Game Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Cougar Post Game Live is presented by America First Credit Union. Whatever financial products and services you need to take care of yourself, your family, or your business, America First is here to help. Cougar Post Game Live is also brought to you by First Colony Mortgage, your trusted lender for all your mortgage needs. Visit firstcolonymortgage.com. Now, here's your host, Jason Shepard. Alex Barcelo leading the Cougars again, leading them to victory. 82-60, BYU defeating UVU. Welcome in to Cougar Post Game Live. Fans, remember when the Cougars win, you win with Papa John's Pizza. Use the online promo code BYU50. That's BYU50 at PapaJohns.com on Monday and receive 50% off pizza at any Utah location. The Cougars leaving the state of Utah now. They'll head out east for two games in the state of Connecticut coming up on Tuesday and Thursday. Let's get you caught up on other action. We will start locally. We will start with BYU women's basketball. The Cougars playing their second game in a row. It is now a final. BYU's record drops to 1-1. One and one. Nice, impressive win to start the season last night over LSU. Tonight, completely different story. Washington gets this win over BYU going away, 77-48. to Cougars struggling, shooting the basketball 27% from the field, 27% from three. The Cougars led in scoring by Lauren Gustin. She had 13 points in the loss. Cougars, as I mentioned, now 1-1 one and one on the season. Earlier today, Southern Utah in Cedar City hosting St. Catherine. T-Birds get the win 95 to 47. Top 25 action, and it looks like at this point, everything is a final number two. Baylor defeating Louisiana 112-82. A final in overtime, and we were following this game during our game. Virginia Tech upsets number three Villanova, and they win in OT by eight. 81-73, the final score in favor of Virginia Tech. Number 9, Duke, no problem with Coppin State, 81-71. And 13th ranked Michigan State, defeating Notre Dame, 80-70. Other teams in the West Coast Conference tonight, LMU losing at Minnesota, 88-73. Gophers get the win over the Lions. Portland defeats William Jessup by 10, 83-73. And the Broncos of Santa Clara, Defeat Nichols 73-57. to Whatever financial products and services you need to take care of yourself, your family, or your business, America First is here to help. To find out more, visit AmericaFirst.com today. Coming up, we'll switch gears and give you some scores from college football. Lots of action today in both basketball and football. We'll go to the football side when we come back. The BYU Cougars victorious at the Marriott Center tonight, 82-60 over the Wolverines. We'll have more Cougar Post Game Live coming up after this on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Here's Jason Shepard with more Cougar Post Game Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. 82-60, BYU improves to 3-0, and UVU. Drops to 1-1 one and one on the season. Welcome back to Cougar Post Game Live. It's time for our Mountain America three-point recap. For each three-pointer that BYU makes, Mountain America will donate $50 to the American Red Cross. Tonight, the Cougars hit 11 three-point shots for a total of $550. Total donations for the season now stand at $1,950. How about we talk a little college football and uh, how about we start locally? I'm sure this is a score that uh, a lot of people would have some interest in. The University of Utah at Washington tonight. We obviously know all of the back and forth with Washington and BYU this week. Well, Utah got the game, as we all expected, in Seattle tonight. And for at least the first half, it looked like Utah was going to pick up its first win of the year. At the half, they led 21 nothing. They did not score again. Washington comes back. They rally with 17 points in the third. And then the game-winning touchdown with 30 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. 24-21. Washington now 3-0. Utah now 0-2. Also, San Diego State at Colorado. Obviously, right now, the final game for BYU football scheduled to be 
the San Diego State Aztecs on the 12th. The Buffaloes defeat the Aztecs 20-10 to in Boulder. All right, top 25 games. Everything right now is a final in top 25 college football. Fifth-ranked Texas A&M defeating LSU 20-7. Alabama defeating Auburn 42-13. Number three, Clemson 52. Pitt 17. Eight, or excuse me, sixth-ranked Florida 24 better than Kentucky at 34-10. Michigan State pulls off the upset over eighth-ranked Northwestern 29-20. The ninth-ranked George Bulldogs winning at South Carolina 45-16. Indiana defeats Maryland 27-11. 20th-ranked Coastal Carolina all over Texas State 49-14. And the 23rd-ranked Oklahoma State Cowboys defeating the Red Raiders of Texas Tech by 6. 50-44 is the final. That's a wrap for Cougar Post Game Live. After the break, back over to the Marriott Center for the Cougar Locker Room Show. Your final tonight from Provo. BYU improves to 3-0 with an 82-60 win over Utah Valley. And you heard it all right here on the new skin BYU Sports Network. Our exclusive postgame coverage continues with the Cougar Locker Room Show. Stops on the arc left and hands to Lee. Lee will try the three and score it. Colby Lee for three. The Cougar Locker Room Show is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Now let's head back to the America First Credit Union courtside seats and join the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. All right, so welcome back courtside here at the Marriott Center. Greg Rubel and Mark Durant with you. It is time now for our America First Credit Union courtside interview. Brought to you by America First Credit Union, here to help. To find out more, visit AmericaFirst.com today and putting on the headset for the first time in postgame this year. It is A.B. Alex Barcelo joining us. Alex, good to have you back. Good to, have, good to be back. It's been <laughs> well, a while. Uh, first of all, it has been. I first of all, I <laughs> want to start with this. Um, you, you spent more time uh, uh, on the floor than a mop this week. You were yeah. all over the place. You hit the deck a lot. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling pretty sore, but we're 3-0, <laughs> oh, so it's all right with me. <laughs> the very last thing we saw you do, one of the last things we saw you do before you hit that free throw, was hit the deck and land on your hip. That looked like it hurt a little bit. Oh, yeah. How yeah. you there's, doing right now? There's, there's big bruise. Coach said mandatory ice pass, so I'm going <laughs> to hop in that after this. Nothing too serious, though, right? No, I'll be good. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, so you, 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 you see your team uh, go 3-0 and with three games and four nights. What makes you most happy right now? Just the fight that we're bringing every day. You know, um, we got such a great group of guys on and off the court, and um, – these guys just come in ready to fight every day, ready to battle. You know, we're, we're together as a team, and uh, we play together. We share the ball really well. Um, we're extremely tough on the defensive end. We could still get better in transition defense, but um, it, it's going to come. It's going to come. We're building chemistry still, and uh, I'm just so proud of these guys because day in and day out, they brought it. Congratulations, Alex. First of all, am I – Am I a pro three-pointer away or college three-pointer away from you right now? <laughs> I was like, is that right. really you? Probably a pro. It's pretty far. <laughs> it's like three six feet. <laughs> hey, listen, I saw you talking to Blaze. Obviously, he played here, so you know him. How well what, – what kind of interaction over the summer and playing, how well do you know UVU, and was there a familiar, f- familiarity there with those guys in tonight's game? Not so much for me. Uh, I know Blaze and then Colby Leafson, who wasn't here tonight, but um, – I know some of our guys uh, know them pretty well, and uh, they had it on their agenda to, you know, get the win tonight. And uh, what, what I was really proud of was it was on their agenda personally, but they were able to set that aside and come together as one and uh, fight together as one tonight, which was it was ex- extraordinary. Um, I was just it, it was just fun. It's, it's guys that you want to play with every day, um, guys who who just sacrifice everything they have, sacrifice their own agenda for the betterment of the team. And I really, I really think that's why we're three and zero right now. Something new for you guys tonight was being down double digits in the first half. They, they started off very well. UVU did. No, they did definitely. I thought we we played really good defense at the start, and then they went on that run, and uh, we came into the into the media timeout. And Coach Pope, he always tells us, "How are we going to respond?" And uh, I think these guys responded really well. We got some stops. We started hitting hitting uh, some buckets. We we had more pace on the offensive end. Um, we were swinging the ball a lot better. Guys started hitting shots, which obviously that's, that's what we want. But um, we responded so well tonight, and uh, we just kept that going. And then when when we got back in the second half, our main thing was you know they they might get another run, but let's let's try and take it from them. We've seen you take over a little bit uh, in phases of each of these first three games. You didn't score your first points 
until about half of the first half was done, and you end up with 14 uh, in the first half. How do you view your responsibility in terms of being an offensive spark plug, and do you kind of measure things and then pick your spots in a way? Oh, definitely. I mean, my main uh, goal is to just lead this team. So at the beginning of the game, whether, you know, you view scout was probably to, to take away my three in uh, lane drives uh, early on. So I was just trying to trying to read what the game was giving me, um, what the defense was giving me and hit the open man. Um, and then I, I kind of found some gaps where I, I could score. But I, I just I'm trying not to force anything and then just lead this group because uh, the culture that we that we bring here and the culture that these coaches preach is just we're all in together and uh, we're going to share the ball. Alex, we got BYU fans got their first look at the big fella, Matt Harms. <laughs> and uh, I thought he looked really good. But uh, you've seen him now for a few months. How would you assess his game and what he brings to this team? Phenomenal. Um, can shoot the ball really well. Brings a, an enormous presence in the paint, uh, defensively and offensively. Um, whether it's you know coming off the pick and roll on the O end or on the D end, you know just creating that presence um, where guys that are driving in the lane they don't want to get their shots off because um, he has that that just huge shot blocking presence. Alex Barcelo is our guest. Th- uh, Twenty points on seven of twelve shooting. 20 points in 32 minutes as BYU holds off UVU and pulls away at the end 82-60. to 60. We'll continue our America First courtside conversation with AB after this on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is the Cougar Locker Room Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. BYU 82 and UVU 60 tonight's final score here at the Marriott Center. BYU goes to 3-0. and Alex Barcelo, our guest in our America First Credit Union courtside interview. So I guess uh, you just want to be like football, right? Just never lose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they set the tone for us. <laughs> so five players in double figures tonight. You led the way with 20. Uh, you wore jersey number four last year. You're in 13 this year. Uh, Brandon Abert's ma- making the number four look pretty good, though, isn't he himself? Oh, my gosh. He's unbelievable. Um it's so fun playing with him. Just, you know, can push the ball in transition, can run the floor, shoot the ball at a high clip, and is just a great teammate. Like, he's just a guy you want to play with. Uh, one of your teammates won't be with you uh, for the rest of this year, on the floor at least. Let's say, um, uh, you know, how, how much BYU is going to miss Gavin Baxter right now. Oh, a ton, you know. It's uh, it's the last guy that you wanted that to happen to, but um, – you know, he's going to respond well to it. He, he's going to bounce back stronger than ever. I, I know Gavin, um, but it, it's, a, it's a big loss for us. You know, we were extremely sad, but we, we didn't want that to let us affect our game today. Uh, but definitely, I mean, we're, we're all there for Gavin. Well, I'm looking at this line, Alex, and another seven-rebound night for you, and uh, you just become like the not-so-round mound of rebound. I mean, you, <laughs> you're the enforcer on the board. Hey, listen, you got to save some for the big guys. That's what <laughs> you take, can't take away our stats, man, but that's pretty impressive. Do you feel like uh, you're, you're rebounding well, and, wh- and why do you think those numbers are so high for you this year? Um, just I had a lot of conversations with Coach Pope, and he, and he said, you know, obviously my goals are to play at the next level, and uh, he said that that might be a stat that can, you know, stand out at the next level. Um, but, you know, just I, I just want to give it – all that I have every time I step out on the floor. So whatever that may be, you know, going after a loose ball, going after a rebound, um, getting a steal, talking to my teammates, like wh- whatever that may be, I-, I just want to give it all to my team. So now at 3-0, and you hit the road tomorrow, and you start tournament play at the Mohegan Sun out in Connecticut games Tuesday, Thursday there, and then back home to hit, hit the road to go up to Logan on the weekend. So you just played three games in, in four days. Now you're going to play three games in five days next week. They come quick, but like Coach Pope says, we want to get as many in as we possibly can. <laughs> yeah, I think he was trying to cram a few more in, but that didn't that didn't play out. But, um, you know, it, this – we just got to take care of our bodies. We got to be mature. Um, we're gonna get. All, I think all of us are gonna get in a mandatory ice bath tonight, um, and then just you know follow follow up with scout tomorrow and Monday, and uh, leading up to uh, you know those three games in five days this upcoming week. But um, we you know we're, we're deep. We have the guys. We have we have the roster, um, and you know I, I have all the confidence in the world in this team. You don't know anything yet, we wouldn't think, uh, about USC. But your thoughts on playing a team out of the Pac-12, uh, your old league here on uh, on Tuesday. It's going to be fun. I'm ready. They beat Montana tonight, by the way. Did you hear? Uh, 76-62 was the final. Oh, I didn't see that. So, yeah, USC beat Montana. They had a, they, they played overtime with Cal Baptist a couple nights ago, 
and beat them. And now they beat Montana tonight by 14. So they're 2-0. and You're 3-0. and uh, Tournament play, bring it on, right? Yes, sir. You know, they're, they're going to be a great team, just like all the teams we play. Um, but I know these guys, and, and I know myself, I know this coaching staff. Like, we're, we're all going to be ready and prepared. Okay, take care of your body. Uh, ice up whatever needs to be iced up. Heat down whatever needs to be heated. And, and uh, you and I are going to have an ice bath yeah. later, Greg. I, I, don't think that's, don't, I don't see that happening tonight. Uh, Alex, thank you so much. Uh, we'll do m- many more of these over the season to come. Uh, safe travels. We'll see you out in Connecticut. Thank you so much. All right, Appreciate that is Alex Barcelo. Mark Pope is next here on the New Skin BYU Sports Network. It's time to get the final word on today's game with head coach Mark Pope. It's the BYU Dining Cougar Post Game Coaches Show. BYU Dining, the classic BYU tradition. Have a scoop today. The Cougar Post Game Coaches Show is also brought to you by Mountain America Credit Union. Mountain America, guiding members forward for more than 80 years. Now let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. BYU fans, did you know that uh, BYU Student Alumni Association runs the largest food drive in Utah County, and they've been doing it for more than 20 years? Teaming up with Community Action Services, you can turn $1 into three meals or 15 pounds of food. Go to fooddrive.byu.edu to help families in need this holiday season. That's fooddrive.byu.edu. This is the BYU Creamery Cougar Post Game Coaches Show. BYU Coach Mark Pope joining us momentarily. It is brought to you by the BYU Creamery, the classic BYU tradition. Have a scoop today. BYU defeats Utah Valley in the UCCU Crosstown Clash by a final score of 82 to 60. Alex Barcelo leading the way with 20 points. So Barcelo's first three games this season for BYU: 25, 19, and 20 points. And this for a guy whose season high, career high, was 18. Last year for BYU, he's been above that in all three games this year, uh, representing, Mark, the expansion of his role, and my, as he responded well to it. Oh, he's hit another gear. He's been so good, and the leadership he shows, he's the he's the engine that gets this machine going, and uh, just every aspect of the game, assists, rebounds, and taking care of the basketball, getting other people their shots. I mean, he's been fantastic. Coach Mark Pope is now uh, 40 games above 500 for his career, 104 and 64, moving to 27 and 8 through 35 games as the bench boss of BYU. And he joins us now on the headset as this is the BYU Creamery Cougar post game coaches show. Coach Pope, congrats on getting to 3 and 0. 3 and 0. So, so some key stats for the Cougar fans. So we are the winningest combined football and basketball. You guys already talked oh, about yeah. this. You know, of Greg course, Greg's already on. Yeah, twelve and zero. Twelve and zero, baby. So and- I, I was breaking it down, and uh, I think I came up with uh, Coastal Carolina. Yeah. is ten and zero. Alabama's nine and zero. Alabama, they're not even close. They're three games behind us. Marshall's eight and zero, but yep. uh, way out in front at twelve and zero right now. Now here's the thing: is Kalani and and uh, the Golden Boy and that offensive line and a great defense has done the the yeoman's work there they've got nine of those but we're trying to catch them we got three well you're doing the important part the not losing part amen let's go 12 and 0 only only university in the country is 12 and 0 right now is football and basketball i dig it most combined football basketball wins and nary a loss between the two programs excellent stuff so you go three games in four days and you get three dubs which was the objective uh, uh, all along but beyond the wins what did you see from your guys that really encourages you as you hit the road? Well, if you'll indulge me first, let me give a ton of praise to Utah Valley. So Mark is doing an incredible job over there. You know, They had a really terrific season last year, and, and they're going to have a much better season this year. Uh, he's recruiting well, and he's a, he's, a, you know, he's a great coach. They have a great staff, and um, they're, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with every single year for, you know, for the near future. I mean, they're just doing an unbelievable job over there. So, so happy for those guys. And, 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 you know, we love these in-state games because they expose so much. So with that said, my biggest takeaway from tonight is, uh, we're down 18 to eight, uh, nothing feels right on the court. The guys are, uh, we're, we're actually getting hyper aggressive, which I, I like the fact that that's where we go. We weren't getting tentative. We sat down in that timeout, and I was like, if, did you guys all drink Red Bulls before before the game? What is happening? Like, we're racing down the court and jacking up shots so fast. And so, um, and, but it was great because that's, that's why you play these games. So you guys can be down 18-8 and feel really weird, and nothing feels right, and you start to question and wonder – 
and then you go one or two, one of th- uh, several ways. One, you can kind of like fade away a little bit and let the frustration overtake you. Two, you can try and fix it all by yourself, which is kind of what got us to 18 eight. And three, you can just take one step back and say, I'm going to trust that our team is going to do this together. That actually the way we play, the way we function as a team is going to work. And the guys started getting a second, third side. They started getting consistent stops without fouling. And then they responded to down 18 eight, feeling really weird with a 30 to six run. So um, uh, that that if if that was the only thing we got out tonight, it's enough. We talked about this on your coach's show the other night uh, when you said to your guys, "You might begin a game 0 for 8 from three. But what are you going to do? Keep shooting." Well, you were 0 for 7 tonight. Yep. You kept shooting and ended the first yep. half shooting where you normally would. Yep. And that's that's what you do as a shooting team. And the, the the great thing is, the more that we experience it, the more the guys believe it, right? Because it is belief. Like it's one thing for me to say it during practice. It's a it's another thing to actually execute it when it matters when, you know, in in terms of our little slice of the world, the whole world is watching and evaluating you and things aren't quite going right and you still kind of say, "All right, but we're going to still go back there. We're still going to trust it." And 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 it works. So, you know, my favorite play, one of my favorite there were so many, but one of the plays I really enjoyed was as we were kind of coming back um Trevin took that transition three from the right wing. Caleb Lohner, which is so huge for us. He had eight rebounds. He gets the offensive rebound and sprays it immediately back to Trevin. And this is still when we're trying to get our footing. And he fired it away immediately because that's what we do. We shoot open shots, banged it. And it was just it was just one little microcosm of how these guys actually responded to the adversity tonight. And that's what you get to see the insides of the team a little bit. And that was great. And when you're not shooting it particularly well, the defense can keep you in the game. They only get 24 points in that first half. Obviously, Woodbury and Overton are a handful, but what a great job, I thought, on the big fella, uh, Fardaz uh, Amac and, uh, you know, Colby and you mentioned Loner and, and Matt Harms. Man, what a nice job on him because he's, he's a good player and he had a rough night. Yeah, he's a, he's a beast. He didn't have his best night. That happens sometimes. He's going to be a dominant force in the WAC for sure. He'll probably be the best best center in the WAC, and he's going to become a great player uh, with with what I've heard about him, just his work ethic and, and, and how good Mark and his staff are at coaching. He's going to become a big-time player. It just wasn't his best night. And – a lot of that compliments goes to our guys. Uh, Kolb started it out by being really physical and really smart and really hard into a gold. And then Matt and, and Rich, uh, just, you know, it's, I mean, th- those those bigs came in waves. It was pretty fun. You played your first game without a starter tonight, Gavin Baxter. And uh, how do you feel your guys, A, responded to um, his, uh, his, his absence? How do you see it going forward? And, and, and really, how's Gavin doing right now? Yeah, it's, it's just, like, so brutal, guys. I, I, wish I, was, uh, I wish I had some more wisdom to, like, make this okay, but it's just not. It just is, like, it's the worst. And, and I think, you know, every time we think about it, I think universally, uh, uh, top to bottom on our team, all of us are just sick. Like, just sick and sad and bummed out, too, because not only is, do we love him so much and, and we, we witnessed how hard he worked and how much he sacrificed for the team and how great he was playing. And so it hurts us as a team. And, and obviously, like, what he's going to have to go through now to climb this mountain again, it just doesn't seem like anybody should have to do it. But I've said this kind of over and over the last 24 hours um, that I think that, you know, when God only throws huge adversity to the toughest people. And so clearly Gavin is one of those guys. And He's going to come back from this. He's going to fight it. It's going to be really hard. And then he's going to ha- he's going to end up being a great player and have one of the great stories to tell in college basketball. But it's going to be a long road. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be pretty. But the end is going to be incredibly rewarding. We'll take a break. It is the BYU Creamery Cougar Postgame Coaches Show. Mark Pope is with us, and we'll continue and conclude our conversation with the coach next. BYU is a winner over UVU in the UCCU Crosstown Clash tonight, 82-60 to on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to the Cougar Post Game Coaches Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. BYU 82 and UVU 60, our final score in the UCCU Crosstown Clash, visiting with BYU head coach Mark Pope. His team goes to 3-0. We got our first glimpse of Matt Harms in game action tonight. And you played him almost, uh, you played him a little more than 12 minutes, and he scored 10 points 
in those 12 minutes. How did Matt look to you in his first uh, game as a Coug? So can I just also, before we go there, so, you know, when we go to commercial, we can yeah. hear the radio on, on our headsets. And right. then right as Greg is about to come back on, some voice uh, of some stellar radio voice comes in the headset. He says, you're hot. <laughs> Is that like a, I mean, I, I I completely agree with that statement. Greg just needs the affirmation. Like, you no, know, that's what I was thinking. Is that like pump you up, man? <laughs> Greg, you are hot, baby. Let's go. I I need to pay one of my assistants to say that every time we start a game. Hey, coach, you're hot, man. You're hot. Your shoes are fantastic. <laughs> I know that's not what he's saying, but. He's saying it's time to start yes, talking, but yes, I, I'll okay. choose to look at it that way from no, now on. I, yeah. That's what I thought of me. I'm like, he is hot. I'm looking at him right now. He's a very <laughs> He's distinguished looking really. man. All right. So, uh, Matt Harms, how fun to have him back, right? We just got one moment. Well, we got a bunch of moments. He was he was terrific. You know, he, he was really productive in just 12 minutes. He hasn't played a live possession in practice or in a game in a week and a half, you know, since he hurt his ankle. And so... I was super – I was I was just – first of all, I was so happy he made it through the game without getting injured, right? And um, and then uh, it, the bonus was that he was so protective and had a really good impact on the game. And we got we got to see – there was that one flash where Trevin got called for the foul, but he cleaned up the, the, the layup uh, against the board quickly and, and hard. And, and we're excited to see a lot more of that uh, rim protection um, as we go. So it's, it's, I'm so happy to have him back. There was a point when he drove from the left elbow, and I think Mark was almost ready to get out of his seat there. He's going to do a, du- a, Dutch wi- a Dutch windmill jam on it. Uh, I was ready. Uh, uh, yeah, he, um, he – listen, it's, it's interesting because – when he's on the floor, we actually do think we function a little bit differently. And so we've gone away from the last 10, 10 days because we had to make some adjustments so we could function on the court. And so it's going to be fun to, like, incorporate him back in and kind of have the have our schematics just flow a little bit towards more, more towards having him on the floor. All things being equal, when he and Cole, let's say, are the two bigs on the floor, who who's the true post there? Yeah, so so uh, Matt, you know, we're going to play Matt at the four. Like, yeah. in, 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 in our continuity offense, it doesn't make a huge difference. In our play calling, it actually makes a big difference. And defensively, it's a big deal. So it was a little, it was a little complicated tonight for two reasons, to get him back to the four because they're playing Woodbury at the four, and he's just such an explosive scorer from right. the perimeter. And I'm not sure that was exactly the matchup we wanted without with Matt's ankle being untested, right? Uh, but, but I think I – think I think Matt's going to function with Rich and Kolb extremely well on the floor together. And I think Caleb and Matt at the five is going to is going to be really functional for us. Coach Connor Harding, he just kind of does the job for you, just takes care of business. Another nice night. And I think he's a terrific defender. I've made the case to Greg that he's your best defender on the team. Tell me where I'm wrong there. I don't think you're wrong at all. He he is clearly 100% our most versatile defender, 100%. Although – uh, Coach Madison drew up a little, um, a little uh, reverse drill back door from the elbow to got him. That. that was not. None of us were happy with that one. Connor, <laughs> the least of all. But he's clearly our most uh, versatile defender. And you know, I, I don't want to keep harkening back to last year, but we can all relate because we're just starting the end of the season. But he is Dalton Nixon and Zach Salius. That's who he is to this team. He just is a winner. Like Connor Harding is a winner. It's what he does. It's what he cares about. And so he's going to do anything he can to help this team win. And he's actually taking harder shots this year. You know, last year he was kind of a catch-and-shoot rhythm guy, but he banged a couple big threes for us that were not easy shots. And he's shooting the ball with great confidence. He's, he's, so he's, he's, he's really making huge contributions on both ends of the floor. The way things are going in the world of college athletics, I give BYU football a great deal of credit for just getting nine games in and then winning them all, of course. Yep. And and the same thing with basketball. You got three games in in four days yep. when games are dropping off all around the country every yep. day. So kudos to you and the boys and your opponents for getting right and, and getting this thing off to a good start. Yeah, and, and this was really complicated. Like, it was t- really to the final hour. We were still, like, confirming that everything was okay two hours before tip-off. And that's, that's going to be how it is this year. And um, I am proud of the guys. I mean, we're going to have setbacks because everyone's going to have setbacks. But I know my guys are being really, really careful, much like football has gone way over the top to be incredibly careful. And so uh, I think these guys just want so badly to keep playing. So to do it, we got to do everything we can to stay healthy. Okay, now it's off on the road. Uh, you hit the road tomorrow, fly back east. Connecticut uh, is the destination, USC, on Tuesday afternoon. 
Uh, USC got to 2-0 tonight, defeating Montana, by the way, 76-62. You get USC Tuesday, you have a, uh, a day off, and UConn or Vandy on Thursday. And then you come right back to get back on the road and play another in-state game in, in, uh, in a week from now. So it'll be three games in five days next week, including some travel. Here we go. Yeah, it, it doesn't get any easier. It just gets harder and harder. And then the next week after that, it, we might be playing the best team of all of them in Boise State. And then we're playing Utah, which is, you know, our toughest in-state. Yeah, I don't know which is going to be tougher, Utah State <laughs> or Utah. I mean, the, all these in-state games are so hard. So we're going to learn, you know, the whole point of this is to learn all about ourselves. And, and you know, we've been really fortunate to get to learn, to taking a lot of data from these three games. And hopefully we'll be able to grow from that. And then, you know, we got three more that are going to just rip us to shreds and, and open us up and let us know who we are and how we need to get better. And, and that's that's the whole point of, of the non-conference, to go see how good you can get. Well, for the first time in four years, BYU Hoops is 3-0. and And the Cougars got there by defeating UVU in the UCCU crosstown clash and i spoke with coach madison pregame tonight coach pope and he said this was a uh, game one of a three-game deal so we know we'll see each other byu and uvu at least two more times right yeah i thought it was four but maybe it's three okay. i don't you know like nick robinson doesn't even he's like coach you're <laughs> not good at this just let me handle this that's what the whole staff the staff doesn't really let me do anything anymore they're like hey the old man doesn't have any idea what's going on just came out of the way Mark is not saying anything. Are you pissed that I said that they were saying Greg was hot? I think you're distinguished. I think well, you're incredibly distinguished I mean, looking also. I think it speaks for itself. I almost Mark. feel like you're sulking over there. Like, why is he saying how Greg you, is so hot? How can you even see me from over there? <laughs> Coach Pope, congratulations on the W and a successful opening weekend. We will see you back east. Super great for you guys. Have, have a great night. Okay? Thanks. That's Coach. Coach Pope. We'll come back and wrap it up here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to the Cougar Post Game Coaches Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. We are back courtside at the Marriott Center, Provo, Utah. BYU defeats Utah Valley in the UCCU Crosstown Clash. 82-60 is our final score. The Cougars won the first half 38-24 and polished off the Wolverines in the second half 44-36. Alex Barcelo pacing five Cougars in double figures with 20. 11 for Averett and Harding, 10s for Harms and Nell. Matt Harms seeing his first action in a BYU uniform and playing 12-plus minutes in his return to the floor after an ankle injury. ACL injury for Gavin Baxter means his season is done. And again, uh, BYU is deep enough to, to withstand some of uh, you know the impact of his loss. But man, Mark, uh, how loaded BYU would have been with uh, with Gavin on the floor as part of that big man rotation this year brings a unique aspect to the big man because he's he's different you know he's so athletic moves so well so well side to side and can jump out of the gym so Matt Harms will give you a little bit of that but uh, I know just on a personal level I'm going to miss miss Gavin it just breaks my heart I feel sick about it as well but uh, that's the nature of sports it's it's rough it's rough sometimes there's a lot of great things but man it can really punch you in the gut and the team will just have to move on, and they better this next two, this next two weeks, Greg. I mean, it's going to be a gauntlet of tough teams. I mean, this will this will be a real crucible for this team to see how they come out on the end of this next two weeks. So our best wishes go out to uh, Gavin Baxter as he recovers and then rehabilitates and continues his Cougar career at some point. And I still think uh, great things. We all know great things are ahead for Gavin uh, in a BYU uniform. And great uh, great weekend for BYU. Three wins in four days. As the Cougars start the season uh, with a frantic pace and positive results, uh, score 80-plus in, in every game, shoot 50%-plus in every game, shooting well again from the arc. Uh, Alex Barcelo we knew would have a greater scoring role this year, and he's shown that he's up to the task and then some, and, and just so many things to be excited about. As the Cougars' mark now hit the road, we'll be heading out with the Cougs and uh, getting to uh, Connecticut, the, the Mohegan Sun for the Legends Classic. They're calling it Bubbleville. It's it's over a span of weeks that they're going to have so many teams playing so many games in that uh, in that venue and we'll be joining them uh starting uh, early next week with games Tuesday and then Thursday against USC on the opener and then UConn or Vandy on Thursday. So Bubbleville here I we get come. A, I get a week of Greg Rubel all to myself. What could be better? It's just you and me baby. <laughs> just you. Yeah, I look forward to that. 
it's going to be uh, – everything's going to kind of be unique this year, but uh, it'll be fun to be back there with you, my friend. All right. We look forward to the next time we're with you on a Tuesday afternoon. It'll be an 11.30 a.m. Mountain Time pregame and a 12.30 tip for BYU and USC. The Cougs 3-0, and the Trojans 2-0, and and the Legends Classic from the Mohegan Sun – is uh, what's up next for BYU basketball. So we'll I talk forgot to you what then. it's like to lose, man. And I don't want to remember. I don't want to remember. Don't want to know. And we should note that uh, Monday night at 6.30 Mountain Time on the BYU TV app, we'll have a special Connecticut edition of BYU basketball with Mark Pope coming your way from the Mohegan Sun. So look for that with Coach Pope and me on Monday night. All right, that's going to do it. Let's thank our crew back at BYU Radio, our coordinating producer, Terry South, our control board operator, Cole Wissinger, our studio host, Jason Shepard, our engineers, Sean Fay and Barry Squires. Our thanks courtside to BYU Athletic Communications Associate Director Brett Pine. Also, Russell Larson providing remote statistical help for us tonight. Appreciate Big Russ joining us uh, virtually, as it were. And then uh, my color commentary partner is the ever-effervescent Mark Durant. So for all the aforementioned, my name is Greg Grubel, thanking you for tuning in. And I'm telling you that our final score is BYU 82 and Utah Valley 60 tonight here at the Marriott Center. So in the meantime and in between time, this has been BYU Basketball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Good night and so long from Provo, Utah. You've been listening to live coverage of BYU Basketball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Coverage of today's game has been brought to you by Smith's Food and Drug. Smith's now has grocery pickup and online delivery to save you time. BYU Basketball is a production of BYU Athletics in association with BYU Broadcasting. Special thanks to BYU President Kevin Worthen, Vice President Keith Borke, Athletic Director Tom Homo, and Associate Athletic Director for Corporate Sponsorship, Casey Stoffer. BYU Basketball is an exclusive presentation of the new skin, BYU Sports Network.